Ancient Greek philosopher Socrates, the first opponent of search engines. Yes, Google didn't exist in the 5th century BC, but Socrates argued that true knowledge is not merely memorizing facts, but questioning and exploration, which only led to more questions. What is perturbation or a humidor? Your hands are itching to Google it, right? Because you'll get an instant answer, but only a surface level one, without any independent thought. And such blind reliance can lead to, for example, drowning in a lake. Like Japanese tourists who tried to reach an island using GPS. The navigator kindly plotted a route and they confidently began moving, on water. The driver realized the idea was doomed only when water started flooding the car. Fortunately, everyone survived. This isn't an isolated case of over-trusting technology, expecting it to simplify our lives. But this simplification is gradually turning us from the pinnacle of evolution into helpless, foolish amoebas who can't multiply 9 by 7 without a calculator. Try it. 5, 4, 3. The correct answer is 63. By the way, a humidor is a box for storing cigars, and perturbation is an unexpected event. If you feel like turning off the video and watching something lighter, my condolences. You're already among those edging closer to dullness every day. Let's take a quick test. You'll see a table with randomly scattered numbers. You'll have 30 seconds to visually follow them sequentially from 1 to 25. Ready? Go! While you're looking at those elusive numbers, I'll recreate real-world conditions for consuming content. We tend to have something playing in the background. Listening to music, reply to a friend, or even wash dishes. Nearly 70% of Americans search their phones or chat while watching TV. This phenomenon is called media multitasking. Sounds cooler than it is. Well, did you finish? Productivity in this mode drops by 40%. Makes sense. The more tasks a person tackles simultaneously, the less effective they become. Funny if this video is playing in a tiny tab while you're eating or telling a friend about yesterday. Welcome to progress. A big thanks to all the terrifying offspring of the digital revolution, from smartphones to neural networks. Ashkoff, someone you likely haven't heard of, but he's a cultural theorist, says, We are witnessing increasing burnout and stupidity gradually becoming passive consumers of content and products, forgetting what it means to be creators and explorers. What about you? Or when was the last time you picked up a paper map? Maybe recently translated text with a dictionary in hand? Or taken a walk with a compass? A long time ago, or never, because it's trivially inconvenient. How about right now you pause the video and go to the nearest supermarket to pick up some goodies to watch? I'm not surprised if, due to laziness or some other mysterious reason, this is an impossible task. Though unlike your primitive ancestors, you don't have to run after an animal until it's tired to catch, butcher, roast, and finally eat it. Because the average modern man looks like this, and a primitive man looks like this. Guess who's going to win the food challenge? No, not our ancestors. It's us who will win, because we have unlimited access to food delivery and marketplaces. All in the name of an easy and enjoyable life. In general, our old predecessors did a good job, because fire extraction formally led to the fact that today every eighth person is obese. Let's go in order. Fire extraction was the first to open the portal to comfort. First we learn how to cook food, keep warm, and build tools. Then we decided that pulling boulders with our hands was difficult, so we got a lever. We wanted to move faster, so here's the wheel. After it, riding, steam locomotives, electricity, and then one click, a bag of groceries at home. And at the top of this pyramid of increasing freedom from physical and intellectual labor is artificial intelligence. Oh, you remember what I said about media multitasking while you were looking for numbers, right? Well, don't forget to take a lesson to save the punch if you use Duolingo, a popular language learning service. Except that management has decided that translators can be fired and replaced with neural networks, and the remaining employees will check the correctness of translations. But now, everything is faster, 
If a bunch of translators who lost their jobs because of AI isn't enough for you, how about the 22,000 employees who were laid off in one day by tech giants Google and Microsoft due to the opening of access to the ChatGPT neural network? That's just as comfortable for management and less costly. If someone was scared, if you studied badly, you will become a cleaner or a janitor. Maybe they wanted to save you from being fired, because AI will not clean the floors. Even today, though robots already perform nearly 50% of all information processing tasks and 30% of physical labor jobs, do you still wonder why the keen desire to reduce any mental and physical effort to zero doesn't look like the pinnacle of evolution? Because we are lazy and helpless products of the great scientific and technological progress. Everything that distinguishes us from animals no longer distinguishes us from artificial intelligence. Not speech, not reason, not even creativity. We're losing on all fronts. Not 10 minutes later, you'll remember the percentage of Americans who are mired in media multitasking or Douglas Rushkoff's profession? Any neural network won't just memorize, it will clarify, supplement, find illustrations, and write an abstract of his activities while we frantically open a search engine. This phenomenon has even been given the name Google Effect when people rely less on their own memory because they are used to endlessly searching for everything on the internet. According to the Pew Research Center, about 60% of Americans admitted that they suffer from such a habit and in general are getting worse at remembering information. A typical user spends about two and a half hours a day in social networks, which is equal to a month and a little more a year. If we continue calculations and take the average life expectancy of 70 years, users can spend about six years in the fascinating media world. Six years with content like this. Sorry, but I've looped in this song in your head all day. Now, our only goal is not to survive but to make life more comfortable and get the coveted mountain of dopamine faster. Leaving behind the need to evolve, we wait for a warm burger to be left at the door while we're in the massage chair anticipating the release of season two of The Squid Game. And hearing from the ever so lovely Siri about what dopamine even is, we slowly but surely continue to get dumber. Isn't this fun? Or maybe this one? How about this one? Streaming revenues this year may surpass pay TV revenues for the first time in history. And it's all because of our need to see pain, danger, and human idiocy practically live. Getting a thrill out of it. The worst part is that this addiction content is socially approved, unlike smoking, alcohol, or drugs. Scrolling through your feed, laughing at memes, putting lights on your stories. What's wrong with that? In a global sense, nothing. One second. Please tell me what is depicted in this picture. Thank you. You just taught neural networks to recognize words and digitize ancient manuscripts. We have unknowingly trained neural networks for decades by clicking on tabs, checking in on social networks, and making online purchases. Automated Turing Test, better known as CAPTCHA, the all-too-familiar defense against spam and bots. Users had to enter garbled text to prove they weren't robots. Except we've actually been fooled a bit. Google had long tried to digitize voluminous texts from the New York Times archives. But the newspapers were old, and the letters were scrawled or crossed out, which caused problems. So they put in the, all these illegible places into CAPTCHA, and if people decoded a word in the same way, the system memorized it. 13 million sheets were digitized. So that you understand the scale, if you put all the articles on top of one another, it would almost be four Eiffel Towers. And the fact that then all switched to the definition of traffic lights, motorcycles, and crosswalks also has not the most obvious basis. Neural networks were scanning and collecting everything, only this time to develop autopilot systems. Here's the rub. While you're admiring another cat in this picture, the neural network already knows the habits of its breed, what it eats, and has plotted a route to the nearest pet store. And while you're watching this video, the neural network has made a billion new connections. And you've made no more than a thousand. It's like in big tennis. You missed one goal and the score is already 15 love in favor of the AI. A recognizable green ball falls into your side of the court. By the size of the ball, by the way, the human brain has shrunk over 20,000 years. But neural networks don't plan to shrink and are developing more aggressively every day. Here you have vertical and horizontal lines, black and white stones. The goal of the game is to surround the territory. 
the one who captures more wins. The game is called Go. In a couple of months, you have a match against a three-time European champion. Let's go. It's a little tough, isn't it? And in 2015, the player Fang Hui, with a crushing score of 5-0, loses to a neural network, which with the same inputs, trained to play from scratch without access to historical human games. The system played against itself, gradually developing strategy and understanding of the game. But if AI superiority in chess, poker, and other toys isn't so impressive anymore, how about the online gaming development and management company that appointed Tang Hu as CEO in 2022? She's supposed to make decisions about day-to-day -day operations, process real-time data, and generate analytics for the board of directors. All that would be fine, but Tang Yu is a virtual humanoid robot. And the COVID could have been prevented with the help of AI. December 2, 2020. DeepMind, an artificial intelligence lab, develops the AlphaFord neural network. It predicts protein structure with high accuracy in days or even hours unlike scientists who took more than 50-plus fruitless years. Imagine that a protein is a chain of beads, and this chain must curl in a certain way to become a kind of key that fits a certain lock. The neural network learned to predict the mechanism of formation of such a key, which allowed to reduce the time to find an effective treatment by hundreds of times. If it had appeared a couple of years earlier, we would not have known the charms of remote work and study. After all, AlphaFold research was used to develop the Pfizer, BioNTech, and Moderna vaccines, which were the most effective in the early stages of the pandemic. The power of artificial brains is great, but Stanford University in 23 published a study on attitudes toward neural networks. It showed that many people are worried about their jobs, data privacy, and that there will be less live communication. We continue to proactively put control of our lives in virtual hands so that we don't have to spend time cooking, picking a movie to watch, music in our headphones, or the right route to take, self-indulgently continuing to dumb down. But there is still a little time to become the strongest and survive the impending neural apocalypse, according to the law of evolution. Let's imagine you're a frog and you're thrown into a pot of boiling water. You immediately push off with your legs to instantly jump out. But we change the conditions a bit and put you in cold water that we gradually heat up. Your body weakens, you become slower, and at some point you just can't physically get out of the pot. It's called the boiled frog effect. So the pot is a world consumed by digital technology. If you think about it logically, there's nothing stopping you from climbing out. But you keep boiling anyway. It's hard to recognize the threat when change happens gradually. Here are some quick tips on how to jump out of the pod. The first rule is to improve your cognitive abilities. Memory, attention, imagination, speech, logic, senses. These are the skills that allow us to memorize our way from home to work, read documents thoughtfully, cook dinner, and communicate with family members at the same time. Second, mindfulness should be prioritized over convenience. Use AI for routine tasks, but free up time for creative thinking. Don't rely on recommendations. Read movie reviews and testimonials yourself. Leave social media alone when the robot vacuum cleaner is scrubbing the entire apartment. Pick up a book. The third rule is don't avoid responsibility. Everything AI does is your control. Don't buy Tesla stock as soon as the neural network says so. Engage your ego and your brain. And if you decide to shift the burden of responsibility, stay proactive and be prepared for the consequences if you make a mistake. Number four, digital detox really works. Completely or partially stop using the internet and digital services. Once a week, put away all gadgets for a couple of hours. Give your brain a rest. Read. Do things in silence. Socialize. After all, this is when the most important thought processes in your brain's default system take place. And fifth, one of the best rules, develop those skills that the AI is unable to replicate. Empathy, emotional intelligence, intuition, and creativity are the things that make us unique. Even in a world of automation, humans should remain human. Enjoy the sound of rain and savor the fragrance of flowers. We are building a world where everything is bought and sold. But what if the things that make us human are lost in this world? Subscribe to the channel. 
give us a like, and don't forget to click the bell. See you soon. Yeah.